to another episode of Connect the Dots, a place where we share experiences, build relationships, and learn how to cope with our everyday challenges. My name is Ezra Wade, and today we have a very special episode for you folks. I'm joined by a group of amazing people, and we will go around the room from my left, around to all of the guest speakers today. Hi, my name is Kareda Nizitani. Hi, I'm Amy Downard. Aloha, Sherry Tana. Wow. So today's episode will consist of asking a few questions to each of these, uh, each of our guests. Greta is a student. Miss Amy is a teacher of the visually impaired. And Sherry is a uh, parent of one of our uh, clients at Pure Guidance of Hawaii. So without further ado, let's begin. So Ms. Simi, how long have you been a teacher of the visually impaired? And out of all careers, why did you choose this one? Wow, that's a big question. So uh, I've been a teacher for the visually impaired for 22 years, which means I'm a little older, but that's okay. <clears throat> uh, I, I became a teacher. I didn't expect to be a teacher for the blind. But when I was doing my student teaching at an elementary school in Kentucky, y'all, my hometown of Louisville, um, I had a student in that class who was blind, and his teacher of the visually impaired kind of inspired me on how she adapted his materials, and then she told me about a program at the university where I could go and get more education to be a teacher for the blind, not just a teacher. So I did that right away, and I was so happy that I did. I love my profession, and I love all the students that I work with and their families. Oh, that's awesome. And I've been with her for half of those 22 years. Yeah, at least, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was 10 years? Nine, 9 years, 10 years? Yes, yeah. yes. I met you when you first started as a preschooler, mm -hmm. when you were being tested, and other teachers worked with you, but I finally got to work with you, I think, when you were in fourth grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain to our listeners... Um, what exactly a TBI does? Right. I think there's a lot of confusion. A lot of people think a teacher for the blind is a teacher at a school for the blind. And in Hawaii, we do have a school for the deaf and blind uh, down by Waikiki area. But that's actually a school for the deaf. And in most, I guess most states, they do have a school for the blind where students uh, go there year after year. But here in Hawaii, we don't um, have a school for the blind. We haven't had a school for the blind that services blind students in uh, almost 20 years, maybe 18 years. Uh, Hawaii School for the Deaf and Blind is a school for the deaf, and that's okay. A lot of people are like, wait a minute, you know, they have to have a school for the blind. But actually, uh, students, I feel, should go to a regular school campus and receive services there, and that's how it's done here in Hawaii. So I'm an itinerant teacher, which means I go from school to school. And I'm a special education teacher, just like any other special education teacher. I just have additional certification and schooling uh, to teach uh, blindness skills, like Braille, uh, adapting materials, low vision technology, mobility, um, how to do daily living skills and independent skills. So it's not just um, access to whatever the school is teaching, but additional concepts like how to get safely from one place to another, how to shop in the community, how to care for yourself, you know, hygiene wise, if that's needed, and um, to take care of your own home through cleaning it, even though you cannot see, you know, all the dirt that you might need, have to clean up. So just, so just different skills like that. So it's a little bit more than the regular special ed teacher would do and uh, completely different from the general education teacher, but we still want to access content. Well, whatever the teacher is trying to teach you, we have to make sure it's in a form that you can read and write and understand. Yeah. So I know some of your, or most of your students are clients of kind of Hawaii, myself yes. included. Yes. So how, um, how has GDH uh, services helped you? How, how has the services helped um, Helped you in any way? It's helped me, I think, in every way because as a teacher, we want the best for our students. And a lot of times that means equipment, especially at this day and age, to access content, it's, um, it's technology. Yeah. And technology costs money. <laughs> but the good thing is, a lot of the technology 
that you can use is available to anyone. And then sometimes you need specialized equipment that costs a lot more. But the whole back in the past was that maybe the school would provide it to you up to a certain point that you would use it at school, but you couldn't take it home. Or maybe you did have special permission to take it home, but it still truly didn't belong to you as the student, the user of the technology. And I think the greatest thing about guide dogs is that when, when they look at recommendations, they talk to the client, they talk to the family, they talk to the education provider or service providers, but the client, the student in that case, gets to own the technology or the equipment or whatever is needed. And that to me is the best thing because then when you own something, you're going to take care of it, you're going to take pride in it, you're going to use it effectively, you know, you own it. So you see it more um, used in your everyday life, in school and out of school, for fun and for school you know, related purposes. So to me, that's been the greatest thing, that ownership of the technology. And also when they assess what technology or materials are needed, it's not just to access a book work. There's some fun things too, you know, some um, uh, things that like toys or activities that you want to use in a recreational setting as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually believe that, especially the whole owning your owning your uh, technology. <laughs> right, because if I own it as your teacher, you're going to go, well, I don't want to use it for this particular thing, but when you own it, you can use it however you like to. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you don't mind sharing, um, what has been the most meaningful experience you have had in your role as a TV guy? I think um, it's just the little everyday experiences to know that I'm a part of trying to help someone navigate the world despite their vision loss. It doesn't matter their age. Sometimes they stay here and I get to work with them year after year like you. Sometimes I only get to work with them for a year or two and they might uh, move to a different location on in our state or completely out of our state. But my hope is always to try to make sure they can be as independent as possible and I learn a lot. You know, I don't have all the answers as a teacher. I don't think anyone does. But to go on that journey together is really fun because I learn things that I didn't think I, I didn't expect to learn. And uh, a lot of times the students teach me. But you can't open up a textbook as a teacher and say, turn to page five, teach the student exactly like this page says. You have to figure things out as you go. And I think that's the fun part. Every day is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the greatest gift is when you know the student succeeds. Mm -hmm. uh, even small things, just taking a bus ride all by themselves, or or getting a Coca Cola out of a machine all by themselves. You know, that's that's really impactful. Well, thank you so much, Miss Amy, mm -hmm. um, for being here with us and for giving us your precious time. Anytime. <laughs> um, but before we move on to our parents, quickly, would you like to give any words of wisdom, advice to anyone listening? Oh, just uh, not to feel alone. I think a lot of times, you know, if you, um, in it, any aspect, as a parent, as a teacher, as a student, as a, an adult client, sometimes you feel like I'm doing this all by myself. But the best part to me, especially, you know, what Guide Dogs has done is to bring people together to have these shared experiences. Mm -hmm. So my word of wisdom is to to reach out when you're offered to participate in anything, whether it's a convention or a one-day event, making arts and crafts or, or kind of meeting together at um, a movie, you know, just kind of dive into that and enjoy it because you'll have some unexpected experiences and you might have some long-term relationships that happen because of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for seeing me. My pleasure. And uh, now we're going to move on to Sharon. Sharon Tana. Sherry Tana, but that's Tana. fine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you how long you Okay. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> so, Sherry Tana is one of our um, parents, and she, one of her son, is a client here at Guide Dogs of Hawaii. And I have met him um, numerous times, and he is so. I, I love being around him. He's, he makes me laugh every single time. <laughs> so, um, Mrs. Tana, if you don't mind me asking, uh, I know your son is. Blind vision, uh, blind. Correct. Is he is he an only child, or how many other children do you have? Elijah is one of six children. Um, one of a set of twins. Also, the youngest of my 
my ohana. He has a twin brother that's younger than him. And as you have met him, he's so outgoing. I think he tries to take the role of eldest and youngest at the same time. But in, in that aspect, I just wanted to address that he enjoys being a part of Guide Dogs of Hawaii. And honestly, we're humbled to be here. So thank you for asking me to join in this podcast. Thank you. And is, is he the only blind child? Yes, he is. Oh. And um, so, other than being a mother and a wife, do you, well, do you, are you um, employed? Yes, I am. So I currently work for Palola Elementary School. I'm their Shatu, which is a school health aide. Um, and I've been there for 12 years. Blessed to work with children, so this is kind of my forte, and I love being around around so many happy faces, like yours, Ezra. Thank you. We listen you. to your music and your meles all the time, <laughs> and you're such, each of you are such an inspiration for my son. So in that, mahalo. Oh, awesome. Um, can you uh, tell me about your child and how, how have you came upon to discover uh, oh, of course not. I don't mind. Um, Elijah was born 13 years ago, a month and a half early. Um, as I was saying, he was uh, a set of twins that Kyoko had blessed me with, mm -hmm. and I'm thankful, although the beginning of their journey actually started off really hard. Um, I went into emergency surgery, was in bed rest prior, two months prior, hospitalized in Kapiolani, and they kept trying to keep babies in me for as long as they could. Um, when it finally came to the time where they needed to remove the babies for their own safety. Um, Elijah, they took out first. And Sano, his brother, his little twin, was actually born not breathing. Oh my goodness. So um, Sano was res resuscitated at birth, and Elijah was taken from my womb straight into surgery. So um, by the time he hit five months, he had experienced 89 surgeries in his life. Uh, for a number of different illnesses. So Elijah is not only deaf and blind legally, he had a lot of medical complications from birth. Um, he was born with congenital cataracts, um, born with coenal atresia, bilateral atresia, a lot of um, Medical, me, medical, I would say challenges, and I'm thankful today because he's 13 years old, and if you've met him, you can see that he has definitely turned the pages around because in all honesty, for the first two years of his life, a lot of the medical professionals had told us that he would not be able to be where he's at now. So their diagnosis by the time he was five months was he would be a vegetable and his life would be hard. But I thank Kiakua and I thank people like you and all who Kokua are children, you know, and all those who who have stand beside us and that's why you all of you give me such inspiration when I see you. And I'm so grateful that my son, Elijah, looks at you guys and you just bring him joy and laughter. And I always tell him, I say, look at what he can do, you know. Ezra, he loves music. And um, the doctor said he couldn't hear. But my family believed in the power of healing and prayer and their their Mele family. You know, they love their musicians. So my little cousins would come in every day and play the ukulele or the guitar and Elijah would just lay his head upon it, you know, and he couldn't see um, until much later in life. 
it's still a challenge for us, but I'm thankful. And thank you for, for allowing me to be here. We're still on a journey, but I believe that there's a much greater purpose as he has for all of you guys. So, and then, how have, um, from Yaski, how has GDH played a role in your son's um, blindness, his son's life? They've been a part of his life from when he was small. Um, although we haven't actively participated uh, with the with the guide dogs, we were always blessed with technology or assistance or even Roberta would call me. And I'm a Kalamai, but I just remember Roberta reaching out to me at, at a moment where I just needed to hear somebody's voice. And I just needed to know that I wasn't alone. Like how Amy Downer, you know, mm -hmm. how you had spoken because mm -hmm. I was literally, Elijah was strapped in the back with his oxygen tank. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys know, he um, couldn't breathe, couldn't eat at one point also, all the way until he was three and a half, four years old. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, he was hospitalized from birth pretty much until that age um and he was strapped in the back seat was sick um we had just got out of the hospital i was completely drained as uh just physically spiritually mentally ready to have a breakdown um there was this telephone call and i'm looking at the number I'm like i don't know this number but something kept saying oh answer this phone mm -hmm. you know so I answered it and I'm trying to pull the oxygen tank out of the back seat you know and get everything set up to place him in his in his little carrier that he used to have because he couldn't walk mm -hmm. um and it was Roberta mm -hmm. and she just was such a at that point that very point she was a blessing, you know, and just to hear her say, how are you? I understand my son has gone through, you know, sharing her own journey with me and understanding that I'm so busy and, you know, it's okay. Just breathe, just breathe and know that, you know, we have these gifts for your son. Please come and pick it up, you know, and that was just a highlight in my life because financially, we experience a lot of hardship, you know, and to know, and if I'm not mistaken, it was right around Christmas time. So it was more of a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I felt just, just like I wasn't alone, you know, that it, it just touched me in ways that was beyond materialistic. Mm -hmm. Although it, you know, for the kids, it was like, wow, well, yay. You know, <laughs> um, but it, it it was a deeper meaning for mom, mm -hmm. for me as a parent, as a person mm -hmm. on the journey of life, just trying to make ends work, mm -hmm. you know, and looking for that silver lining, and mm -hmm. she just happened to bring it. Mm -hmm. So, guide dogs of Hawaii from the very beginning until now, when we're actively involved, mm -hmm. my son has grown in ways that I cannot even imagine. I never imagined him to say, mom, it's okay, I can go. You know, because normally he's right, he's my OP, he's my shadow. <laughs> he won't leave and we had gone to the water park and I was trying to get him on this one slide and it was all of my family because they, you know, guide dogs, afford, they enabled us to be able to experience this with mm -hmm. our family, which for that, even that, itself was such a blessing because mm -hmm. we can't afford to take our family to wet and wild mm -hmm. you know so we went and I was trying to get him on this slide and he kept saying I'm scared I'm scared I'm like don't be we're here you know because I want to see him live life mm -hmm. he actually did not experience just going down a regular slide until he was four and a half years old he was always in a bed mm -hmm. that was contained with these bars he would always stare out the window and I would ask for a window overlooking the outside and they'd always place us in Kapiolani 
um, facing the the road, mm-hmm. and it was because the best thing that he could see was really bright lights. Mm-hmm. So he'd sleep all day and get so excited and hold on to the bars because he couldn't stand yet mm-hmm. and stare out the window because he could just see all these red lights mm-hmm. passing for back and forth. And that's that's how we knew that there was hope, mm-hmm. you know, for him. And we would just litter his room with blinking lights and he'd just light up our our lives with his big smiles mm-hmm. and then he started laughing you know but it's 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 been an amazing journey and when he told me ma it's okay i can go and it was following ezra then and they were all gonna go together he went since then he's always telling me mom i got this he's no longer afraid so awesome. it, it was a gift that is priceless because now he's independent you know, and he wants to explore and he sees all of these role models Mm -hmm. that he doesn't feel like he's left behind where in the regular school system, he often feels and understands that he's not like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So this, this arena that he's been, that we have been blessed with as a family um, is kind of like his space, Mm -hmm. you know? He's, he, he's where he needs to be, and these are my people. He always tells me, that's my people. And I'm like, yep, that's yours. <laughs> wow, that's, that's truly an amazing testimony. It truly is. You know, I think in life, we all have our storms. You know? But like every storm in the real world, it has an ending. <laughs> so I, I, I see... I see things just getting more brighter and more, mm-hmm. more for the better for your ohana. Mm-hmm. So mahalo for sharing that. Mahalo for having us and for being amazing, all of you guys. <laughs> I'm serious. I I always tell you, like, you have to learn to listen so um so he can teach you how to play. And he laughs at me. He strums at home. It's so funny that he always and he he'll know when it's out of tune. Mm-hmm. So he'll come back to me, he's like, fix it, please. <laughs> <laughs> like, you need to learn how to fix this yourself and stop putting it out of tune. <laughs> wow. So, uh, from my understanding, you are uh, the leader of a support group for parents. Yes, Could I you, am. Um, elaborate more about that. I was blessed. In fact, at Wild, Wet and Wild, um, our day, I always consider it that's going to be my anniversary of a new beginning. Um, Jeannie had approached me and asked if I was interested in participating in a parent support group. And my heart just overflew, flowed with just, just this, this unbelievable, this is a this is what it what, what we've been working towards and you know i believe that i have so much at this point to give to others as well as it's a space that's very needed mm-hmm. very needed i remember and even my husband um the things that we've gone through while our child was in the hospital you know, um, things that we've gone through in life, our trials, um, our challenges, our growth lessons. I always tell my husband, I say, stop thinking of it as a bad thing, you know, because <laughs> perspective is key. Mm-hmm. And I consider it lessons for us to grow as not only independent people, but as a family unit, you know, wherever we are. Um, so the guide dogs of Hawaii, um, had humbly asked me to be a part of a parent support group, which we do have now on Facebook. So please join us. It's called Guiding Angels Support Group. And it's pretty much based, um, built to help parents have a space to share their journey, um, to, to become a part of something outside of just being mom or dad and to nurture that them as parents, you know. Um, a lot of times we forget to take care of ourselves. Um, we get so wrapped up in our daily trials or, you know, our daily tasks is that we forget to cocoa the cup that actually fills everybody else. So 
we created this space, and I'm thankful to be a part of it, to help cocoa the parents, you know, especially the ones that, that feel alone. Well, thank you so much, Mrs. Tonga, for being with us here today. Uh, very, very appreciative. Very thankful that you were able to come and spend a few, uh, a couple of hours with us before you have to head off to work. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Um, and, you know, being a parent, let alone being a parent of a blind child is hard. You know, so we as children are so appreciative, appreciative of the support that we get from parents and grandparents and people. Because I myself have parents and grandparents who support me and guide me throughout this journey and who encourage me about my blindness. They support what I do. So I know how it is to feel grateful to have people like you getting involved in organizations such as uh, So again, I mahalo you truly for being here with us today. And before we move on to our student guest, um, do you have any words of wisdom for any of the parents listening today? Please come and join us. Please, please look for us on Facebook. Um, it's under Guiding Angels Support Group. Uh, we more than welcome you wherever you are and I'm hoping to one day learn how to do Facebook live so that for the parents and I totally understand this because I've been there um, for the parents who can't travel who can't come I want you guys to be a part of it I want you guys to be able to experience being a part of somebody and understanding that you can come as you are you know you you can come as you are and it's a safe space for for families to get together and just just talk story, you know, just bond, just that respite, that time out. Um, please love yourself. Take a moment every morning to just look in the mirror and tell yourself you're amazing, you're phenomenal, you're doing the best that you can, regardless of what this world tells you the best is. Whatever it is that you're doing to Kokua, you will only help to empower, empower your ohana. And I commend you for being awesome and brave and having the courage to continue to do what you do in your life. So thank you. Um, and last but not least, we are going to move on to <laughs> someone who I knew for a couple of years now. Um, and she is on my left. Greta. Hi. <laughs> uh, so, our audience knows your name already. Yes. So, <laughs> could you tell them what grade you are in and what school do you go to? I'm in 11 grade and I go to Waipahu High School. Waipahu. What's your guys' mascot? Our mascot is Marauders. Marauders, okay. <laughs> there you guys want Waipahu. Yeah. Go Marauders. Marauders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Fred, how has Guide Dogs of Hawaii, because I know you've been applying with them for a um, couple, years? couple years now. Yeah. So, how has Guide Dogs of Hawaii changed your life? So, how Guide Dogs has changed my life. So, before, I never had brown oat, so I would use the school one that I can't take it home. So when I do like one assignment, I have to do it in like on a braille writer. Mm. And then I heard about this program from Miss Wayne De Silva, which is my visually impaired teacher. So she was telling me about the guide dogs of Hawaii, how they're gonna help me with the technologies and stuff. And then she also asked me if I could sign up for it. And then I said, sure, I can sign up. And then when I signed up, I went, I went to meet with Roberta one day. And she was telling me that I can get a brown note, I can get my own brown note and my own iPad and a victory note. 
and I can take it wherever I could go. And then she was asking if I ha if I <coughs> want one, if I want those, and then I said, sure, I would love to have those. And it changed my life. <laughs> Exactly. So now I can do my assignment faster, mm -hmm. and I I can send you know I don't have to transcribe mm -hmm. on a paper. So that's how they changed my life. So I thank them for my for my brown nose and my iPad, my big barrier, and also for helping me mm -hmm. and also inviting me for the social activities. Oh yes. Yeah, I that's agree. the best. <laughs> 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 so, you're in 11th grade, so how has, uh, you know, my uh, asking, what is the greatest challenge you faced in high school or in school in general? Okay, the greatest, the, the challenge that I faced was like going around the school, but it was like crowded. And I was holding on to my PPT's arms, and then I'm like, I was like used to holding to her arm, mm -hmm. and then I told her I don't want to hold her arm so much, so I can just just walk through the crowd. So she would either tell me to go on my right, and I was on my right, and even though she said, and my other teacher said there. The crowd is supposed to be know that I'm coming to the class, and they should know that there's a, I have a team with me. Yeah. So she was saying, "Are you sure you can walk by yourself?" And I said, "Yes, I got this. I mean, I'm in mean, pants." <laughs> <laughs> amen. Amen. Yes, I got this. Get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> So do you think it was, I guess, challenging to advocate for yourself, to stand up for yourself and tell people that even though you're blind, you're still, you still, you, you can do it? Yes, I can. I could, well, before I couldn't stand up for myself, I was mm -hmm. like afraid, mm -hmm. yeah. I was like scared. Mm -hmm. And instead, Mr. Silva said, be brave. Yeah. Don't worry. And my other teacher said, God is walking by his side. Amen. And then I said, okay. <laughs> and then I'm walking around now at the school. That's good. And I'm not afraid. I knew God is talking to me. I got it. Yes, and I'm praying <laughs> that I can get around on my own. And when I get to the library, I was like, yes, thank God. <laughs> Baby, that's the best life you could ever have in life. <laughs> yeah. That's the strongest one. He's better than your PPT. I saw you know that. Yeah. I'm sure your, your testimony, you know, it's really my, uh, an encouragement to everyone else listening who's our age, you know. Mm -hmm. To not be, to uh, you shouldn't be afraid to stand up for yourself and advocate for your blindness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right on. Right. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so before we end today, I just have one last question for you. Um, if you could tell any, if you could think of one thing to tell sighted people about blindness, what would it be? Well, to me, blindness is well before it was hard. So, as like like when we were at a parent meeting, my mom was sharing to um Sherry and Roberta about how I became online. So she said it was hard for me. So she was she she was gonna she wasn't gonna put me in school because she said people might think that I cannot do things and they might laugh at me. And then I had a home visit teacher that came to my home and told my mom, just put her in school, do not give up. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to school, I can do, I can do what, I, what everybody else did. And then, like before, when I was at 
my home, I couldn't walk independently. I had to hold on someone's arms. And there, and I didn't know how to use Braille. By then, when I came here, when I was like fourth grade, I only know some alphabet, like just A and B. But then when I had Mr. Silva, she taught me how to use Braille. Like, and I get, I get pretty fast. And then next thing you know, I just learned I can read. I can read pretty well. And then I learned contraction and then nervous. And then UEV, now I'm, u I'm learning how to do like highlighted and bold. So I get them really <laughs> So, for me, blinds mean like, like it's not just like I cannot. It's it's just that I don't want to hold on to people's arm because I don't want to get to it, and I don't want them to like guide me to like the direction. Mm -hmm. I don't want. I just want them to point me where the direction is. Mm -hmm. I can just find it myself, like how. We were doing it at Ho Opono. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think as a parent, sometimes we, we get so used to, to doing things that we enable them, you know, to, I mean, we disable them to be able to become independent and that experience it wet and wild. Um, help me to step back and see, you know, because I'm always so afraid that he's going to get hurt or yeah. whatnot. And, and I also created that little handicap in him. Mm -hmm. And so he's seen everybody else, you know, all of you guys doing it on your own. And then mm -hmm. he finally, that light went in his mind and he said, I can do it. And that made me step back and say, Wow, you know, my husband said, babe, he's probably been waiting for you to let go. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the time that when we were at Water Park, he, like, you told him to, like, you told him, Elijah, come with me. And then he said, no, I'll be waiting on the end of them. And then he said, are you promised to not, to not be naughty? And he's like, yes, I do. <laughs> and he's so cute how he does. <laughs> yeah, do you know that that's the first time that he's ever asked to for me not to join him. Yeah. So that day was a profound day for my family in many aspects. Me as a parent, I had to step back and see that I had to allow him that space, mm -hmm. you know, to grow. And he's grown since then. Oh my goodness. He's grown since yeah. then. Yeah. Like, like he was, like he, he came with us. He did good. <laughs> so he never, he never like, Wonder was so you would just stay by us. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys for opening that to him. A lot of times he tries to join groups in his school, but because he's included and he's in a regular public school, um, he's not allowed to due to liability or you know, and it hampers his growth. Yeah. But that's why he always say when he sees you guys, he's like, Oh, that's my peeps you know, and I'm like, Oh yeah, that's your peeps. Just be nice, okay, because he can be bossy. As Miss Jeannie calls him the general, he is the general. He, like I said in my family he forgets he's actually the second to the youngest. And my oldest is twenty six and he's looking at me like, How did he get so so, like, gosh, are you sure you're supposed to be the baby? <laughs> but Ezra, if you don't mind, um, right before, I just remembered I have forgotten to let the parents know that we have parent meetings here at the conference room once a month. So please join us. Um, it's in, in the Pan Am building. Yes, yeah. it's in the Pan Am building, room 1019. Um, if you need information, contact Ms. Roberta or myself um, or, or on the Facebook uh, that, that Guiding Angels Ohana Support Group. Um, please get your email to me. I'll send out email blasts. I know everybody's, and, and especially with the holiday season, I'm so excited. I'm trying to figure out what kind of fun <laughs> things we can do as parents <laughs> together. Um, but please join us. We will have it once a month. 
In fact, our next one coming up is next week, Saturday. So if you're interested, give our brother a call, get my information or send your email my way and let's get together next Saturday here at the Pan Am Building, room 1019 at 10 o'clock. Is it 1016 or 1019? 1016. Oh, 1016. 1016. I call it my 1016. I'm so excited. <laughs> I want to see all the parents here. Um, is, it, is it on the 27th or the 20th? No, we moved that day. It was originally going to be the end of this month, oh, um, but there's so much stuff. And then that weekend that uh, we decided to do it for next weekend oh, on Saturday, um, 10 o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I will put it on Facebook. I'll send email blasts to confirm the exact time. Um, but yes, next Saturday. Thank you so much for sharing. So before we end, I wanted to thank again everyone who gave up the time to be with us today. Ms. Greta, Ms. Amy, and Ms. Tano. Ms. Tano. Mahalo to you for coming out this, uh, this morning and for sharing your stories, your testimonies, your experiences with us today. And to our listeners, thank you so much for coming back. Mahalo. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to email connect the dots at guidedogs.org and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for the next episode. Again, this is Ezra. Mahalo. Mahalo.